Hello and welcome back to our final d lesson in digital painting. Yeah! Yes! Yes! This lesson, we are going to be using all of the techniques that you have learned up to this point and putting them together into one big project. Wait, SpongeBob! We're not cavemen! We have technology! This lesson is going to last a total of five days. Sometimes it lasts even longer than that, depending on if students would like to continue working on it. Sometimes we've had it last up to two weeks. It really depends on the class and what they would prefer to do. So this lesson, you are going to be recreating a famous artwork. And it is an artwork of your choice. The one that I have picked is going to be the Mona Lisa, which is right here. And this link that is in the description, it's also going to be in the Google Classroom, is a link to very well-known famous artwork. Some are buildings, some are paintings, some are digital paintings, others are sculptures. And it's entirely up to you whichever ones you would like to use. As I said, I'm going to be using the Mona Lisa right here. And how you're going to get the picture. Once you find a picture you want, you can either go up here to the top right where it has a little download and download it. As you can see right here, it's coming up right there. You can also just right click and go to download. It will give exactly the same thing. So once you have it downloaded, we are then going to go into Photo P. Let's close out of my current project. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to open from computer. Whenever I open from computer, it's going to bring up uh, the window for me to select my artwork. And I currently have it downloaded right here, the Mona Lisa. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And because we are going to be working with this artwork, we don't need to copy and paste it somewhere else. Instead, what I want to do is to go ahead and start a new layer first off, so we will not bother the background. And then what I want to do is I want to lock this so it will not be affected by anything that I do. So I'm going to select the background and I'm going to click this little lock icon and it's going to lock everything in place on the background so we can't move it we can't do anything to it it's not going to affect the image at all okay so using the tools that we had before we're going to be repainting this artwork and I know that sounds kind of crazy but I'm going to show you some techniques that are going to make it a lot easier first let's go ahead and zoom in to the artwork here for those of you who did not see that lesson, it is control plus to zoom in, control uh, minus to zoom out, or control zero to make it uh, full screen. Okay, so now that we are zoomed in, we need to try to match this color of her skin up as best that we can. There's two ways of doing that. First, we could just open this up right here and try to match this color up the best that we could, or there's another method. You can just click over here at whatever color you want and it will change to that color for you. You can also do the quick selection tool or the eyedropper tool. That is right here. This is the eyedropper tool. The shortcut key for that is I. So if we click I, you can see it's now selected. And whatever color we click on, as you can see right here, it just changed to that color. So you can very quickly select different colors. And then you can go right back to your paintbrush, which the quick tool for that is B, or the shortcut key. And then you can paint with that color. So as a reference, I will... Bring up your eyedropper tool, you select your color, B for your paintbrush, and then you can paint. I click B paint. I click B paint. And I have my brush set really big right now. You are going to want to make sure that your brush is a lot smaller than this so you can get much better details. But as you can see, we are now starting to go ahead and get a pretty nice skin tone going for this painting. Well, I'm sure that you're looking at this and saying, oh, wow, that's nice, but I mean, it still doesn't look like 
skin. It doesn't look like the painting itself. It's just a bunch of blocky textures. Well, how you smooth that out is by using the blending or smudging tools that we used before. So as an example, let me go ahead, go right down here, finish this up. There. I'm going to go ahead and hide the background. So right now we just see the skin tones. If I go down here to the smudge tool, which I showed you last time, let's change the size of this brush down to something more manageable like that. And let's change the strength down to about 17. Now I can come in here and just click and drag and smear this around. And now we have created a very convincing skin tone. You want to try to go with the direction of whatever you are blending or smearing, and that will give you a nice, a nice realistic look to the skin or whatever you are blending together. It's just like painting in real life. The next thing that I want to show you is stacking the layers up. And I mentioned that you could duplicate layers pretty effectively inside of Photopea. Well, Whenever you take color and you blend it or smear it like we're doing here, you can see that there's actually a transparency. So you can see straight through those colors. It's not that you are putting more colors down. You're just taking existing colors and spreading them over a wider area, which means there's less paint whenever you smear. How you fix this, well, in traditional painting, you would have to add more paint, but in Digital painting, all you need to do is just duplicate your layer. And if you duplicate your layer, you can see that all those areas just got filled in. So you don't have to go back in and add more paint. You can just keep duplicating your layers. And as you can see, you can't see through it anymore. Now, this is just a personal preference of mine. I personally do not like having a big stack of layers that I'm not going to be using. If you don't want to see all these layers, all you have to do is combine them together. So select all the layers you want. I selected the first layer and then I held shift and click the top layer and selected all the layers I wanted. Right click and then you go to merge layers. Whenever you merge layers, it will compress all the layers that you have selected down into one. And now you have a flattened layer that has all of your layers on it. Wow! This project, you are going to be recreating a famous artwork. The link for the famous artworks are going to be in the description. Now let's talk about legality. Obviously, you cannot claim that you were the original artist of the Mona Lisa. That is why we are doing famous artworks. Now, in real life, you are not going to be allowed to copy any artwork whatsoever. But what you can do is you can look off of artwork for inspiration. Let's say that instead of having Mona Lisa with reddish brown hair, I'm going to have her with blonde hair. Well, at that point, it's no longer the Mona Lisa, but you need to just change things about it. Try to add something to it that's going to make it yours. If you want to have the SpongeBob clouds in the background of the Mona Lisa, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. You want to have uh, SpongeBob surfing on the Great Wave, that's fine. Do that too. It is completely up to you. But whenever you do paint this, make sure that it is something that you add in there that makes it different than the original. Make sure that you add your own touch to it. Okay, when you are finished with this project, this is going to be the first project that's going to take you multiple days to work on it. You are going to need to go to File, Save as PSD. And the reason why we are doing that is because whenever you save your file as a PSD, it will save the layers on there as well. So if I close out of this and open it back up, I can go down here to the PSD file of the Mona Lisa right here. I click open. You can see we still have our layer on there. That's why we save it as a PSD. If you save it as a JPEG, it's not going to have those. Once you do open your project back up, all you have to do to make changes to it is just click save. So let's say 
I'm going to take this paintbrush and I'm going to draw a happy face right here. Boom, happy face. File, save. That's it. My picture is now saved and it's on my computer. You are going to want to save your projects frequently. Make sure you save them because if your computer dies, well, that's it. You lost your progress unless you saved it. So to recap, your project, select a famous artwork from the list given here, download it and open it up in Photopea. You are then going to repaint the artwork using the eyedropper tool, the paintbrush tool, and the smear smudge tool. Make sure you create something on it that is yours and make it original to you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure you save your project frequently and you will have at least a week to work on this. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you all very much.